Welcome back to RFD Profit Watch. I'm Delos Yonke. We're going to Florida today. Steve Johnson, Central Florida farmer, chairman of the Florida Citrus Commission, vice president of the Florida Farm Bureau Federation, and a citrus farmer himself. Steve, how are you? I'm good today. How are you? Pretty good. When it makes the national news, you know it's an issue. Uh, I saw it, uh, actually, I've seen Yahoo Finance, saw it on CNN. Uh, the futures prices of orange juice are through the roof. So either the Duke brothers are trying to corner the market or something's going on. So what's going on down there, Steve? Well, that, and that's a really good question. To see the futures where they've never been before is as exciting as a grower. But what's really causing that is due to the lack of supply. Florida has had some hard hits between hurricanes, uh, disease, pressure, uh, and even the latest cold weather we've had over the last two years. Uh, that doesn't mean citrus business is going out of business. Uh, it just means that we've, we've created some hurdles that we've had to get over. Um, and so supply and demand has gotten short. Uh, does that mean you're going to run out of orange juice? No way. Uh, we have several weeks in supply. Uh, we also import some from other countries. Uh, but it's a good place to be for us as an industry to allow us to get back healthy with uh, some high prices to allow us to get some things uh, that we need done in order to grow the quality crop that we have. So were there three hurricanes? I'm trying to think. Uh, the Ian, Nicole, Fiona, were all those in Florida? Well, so it actually goes all the way back to 2004 when we had the five hurricanes. Oh, man. And so that's what really spread the, the greening disease, uh, which took out a lot of trees. And then 2017, we had uh, Irma. And then this last year, we had Ian and, um, and Nicole. What about citrus greening? What's going on there? Uh, we're learning a lot from that. Uh, but what we've figured out is that, that uh, we have to just grow a little differently. We have to spoon feed them. Uh, so when you do lose 30% of your roots, there's less avenues for the nutrients to be uptaken into the tree. So we've had to go back to feeding them from the head down and, and learning how to grow roots again. Um, there are some new things that are out, new technology with new chemicals and new, new ways to apply chemicals. There's also on the horizon is new, some, some new varieties that look very promising that are tolerant to greening. Oh. Um, so that's, that's, that's a very encouraging for us as we move forward. How many varieties of oranges are there? Oh, my goodness. Uh, there's, there's bunches and bunches and some old and some new. Um, and, but there's really three main ones, and that's what we call early, mid, and lynches. Hmm. Remember when there were five varieties of apples and now there's like 30 or 50 or something like that? Or are, <laughs> you, are you kind of in the same way there? We are. We are. Um, I, I'll tell you that, that um, we're figuring out that which ones really work and which ones don't. Um, I don't think the industry is headed for the 30 or 40 different varieties. I think we're all headed for the one that, that competes with greening the best. Hmm. What is your uh, window for harvest? So we normally start, uh, we'll start some fresh fruit at the end of September, and we'll run through usually about June. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's a long process. That is a long process. Are some oranges specific for food, and are some oranges specific for juice? No, not really. Um, they're all the same. Uh, we as growers, we, we just try to grow so a crop that is beneficial for both uh, avenues, depending on what the market's doing and, and um, what the best return for us is. Gotcha. You say September through June, am I getting one harvest off each tree during that entire time? Yes. So uh, some trees mature earlier based on the mm -hmm. variety and the type that they are, and some mature later. Uh, now, most of the juice fruit is picked from December to June. Uh, what we pick early on is usually the fresh market, and then fresh market is in between all the other months also. I was, I was going to ask, like, if, if the oranges don't turn out like you'd hoped, like they wouldn't necessarily look very good on the grocery store shelf, they may just get squeezed into juice. Is, is that conceivable? That, that's, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Um, you know, whether we have too much disease pressure and, you know, you get small things like rust mites or melanose, which doesn't hurt the, the fruit. It just makes it look ugly. It doesn't affect the taste at all or anything like that. But it just does not look desirable to sit on the grocery store shelf. Now, I was going to say, insect pressure and down there, you know, 
I mean, we get a couple of rains and it gets warm. We start worrying about disease pressures here for corn and soybean crop. I mean, your your inputs, I imagine, are uh, are pretty steep down there. <laughs> they are, and, and and you're right. Weather plays a huge role in what we do. Uh, we're constantly looking at that because we live in a tropical climate or grow in a tropical climate. It makes disease pressure even worse, and so we really have to monitor that on a weekly basis, basically. Yeah. Now, I only see one contract for frozen concentrated orange juice. How many are there during the course of the year? And and so is there a, a carry? Is the market inverted? You know, what, what's that look like? So, you know, the, the market does change. Well, the market changes every year. But um, once the price gets established, it kind of is, is pretty um, steady, unless we have a weather event, whether that's a hurricane or a freeze. Otherwise, once we kind of get into the season and we start harvest, the market's pretty steady. Uh, does that mean next year's market? Like, is this something that you can do forward contracting on? Yeah, so we, um, historically, we people will do one to five-year contracts, and, and so maybe some three-year contracts, some five-year contracts. And uh, we're like a lot of farmers. We don't put it all in one basket. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, you know, contract some for years, some for three years, some for five years. Um, helping us project and plan what we're going to do. And a lot of those contracts do have a rise clause attached to them. So if the market goes up, we have an opportunity to take advantage of that. What kind of storage do you have? How do you, how do you store citrus? Well, we don't store it as a grower. Okay. Uh, now, the processors can put it in tanks, um, and they can store that for up to 18 to 24 months in chilled tanks. That's the reason we you don't worry about running out of orange juice because we've got supply and we've got ways for it. And that's the reason we have it year round. Uh, same thing with fresh fruit. Um, we can put X amount in what we call cold storage and then bring it out, mm -hmm. uh, repack it, repack it, and and put it in the grocery stores. There is an an art and a science behind that, you know, so you don't have too much decay and you don't have too much uh, fruit loss in that. Yeah. Even our uh, horseradish farmers up here in Illinois, they have some cold storage on the farm, too. So, Right. Yeah. And uh, last question, we've been talking about oranges. Is that all you have? I, because citrus can, can mean a few things, right? That is true. So we don't have just citrus. We, um, we also have cattle. We have about 1,000 head of mama cows. So we have a cow-calf operation. Uh, and then we also do some outside like I explained before, with harvesting and some other things in order to be diversified and, and uh, keep going. Thousand head of mama cows. Uh, if you had a couple of hurricanes in a year, then someone's got to have a lot of fence to fix, I would think. <laughs> that definitely happens. That definitely happens. Man, oh, man. All right, well, hey, uh, I think I've run out of questions. Uh, I hope I hope you didn't mind the uh, Duke Brothers reference. You probably heard it for 40 years. but uh... <laughs> Yes, sir. Not a problem. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it's good to know because, you know, some people don't get their orange juice in the morning. They could be off to a bad day. So I'm glad that's, that's not the case. That's right. Well, we just hope they continue to drink and they drink more every day. Good deal. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Steve Johnson, Florida Farm Bureau Federation, the Duke Brothers references from the 80s movie Trading Places.